Hey friends, welcome to Flight Test Tech, I'm Josh. This is gonna be the final video of the build process of our XL Scout. Now in this build video, we're gonna be doing our final assembly of the Scout. We're gonna be installing our radios and getting it ready to fly. By now, you should have already built the main wing, our fuselage, and we should also have all the electronics that we're gonna to need to fly this airplane ready and available. Now there's two different ways that you can build your Scout XL. One is this three channel model, which means you're not gonna need ailerons. All your turning is gonna be done through your rudder and your pitch control is gonna be done, of course, through your elevator. The other version of the Scout XL that you can build is a four channel model, and that is where you have ailerons, rudder, elevator, and throttle. That's gonna be the setup I'm gonna be taking you through today, but don't worry if you wanna do the three channel, all you simply need to do is not put your ailerons in. This is also something you can do later on as you become more of an established pilot. The first step that we're gonna to wanna to do here is we're gonna to wanna to install the main wing onto our fuselage. The easiest way to install the wing onto our fuselage is to let the nose of the airplane rest firmly on the table. And we're gonna gently slide this down into place. And with a gentle rocking motion, we're gonna slide the wing down until the center seam of the wing is perfectly in the center of the fuselage. We're gonna carefully line up the wing so we can see the center seam perfectly in the center. And to make sure our wings are perpendicular, we can take our triangle square, we can line that up with the leading edge of the wing, and we wanna make sure that our fuselage touches the other side of the triangle square, meaning it's 90 degrees. Another real easy indication is to look at your two center gravity balance points and make sure they're evenly spaced. Once you have your wing installed, we're gonna lay this flat onto the table, and we're gonna sight down the fuselage, making sure that our wings go up evenly on both sides of the fuselage, and it looks nice and square compared to the tail. Once we've confirmed everything is centered and also the wings don't need to be tilted one way or the other, we're gonna lock this down with a bead of glue on all four sides of the wing. Now that we have our main section of our wing glued to our fuselage, we're ready to move on to our next step and that's gonna be installing our servos, our push rods, and our control horns. Now for this model specifically, I'd strongly recommend maybe grabbing a couple pillows or something that's soft so you can flip this over on its back against the table and not smash anything flat. And now we have a nice soft surface to work from. For our servos, we're gonna be using our FT-17Gs. These are 17 gram servos, metal gear, really heavy duty. In our 17Gs, you're gonna have our main servo and you're also gonna have two different servo arms and our servo arm screw. For this application, we don't need to use our long servo arm, although I would definitely recommend holding on to it. For this application, we're gonna be using the shorter of our two servo arms. Now to give our servo connections the proper reach to get up to where our receiver is gonna be, we're gonna be adding on our 30 centimeter extensions. It's really important whenever you clip these together that you match up your grounds, whether they be black or brown, and your signals, whether they be orange or white. I'm just gonna connect it like that. To make sure that these don't accidentally pull apart, we're gonna take a piece of tape and we're gonna wrap it around this connection. An easy way to get your extension all the way to the nose is let gravity be your friend. Simply slide it through the back tail section and then jiggle your fuselage until your servo connection comes through to the bottom. Now that we can reach our servo extension, we're gonna rock this into place and notice that I put my servo arm as close as possible to where my rudder is gonna be. We're not gonna glue this in place quite yet, but we are gonna go ahead and mount our servo arm. Including our kit is our XL size control horns we're also going to place this in place here so that we know the exact size that we need to make for our control arms. Using the push rod wire that we've included in the kit, we're going to do our first Z-bend. To do a Z-bend, first we're going to grip it about a quarter of an inch from the edge. Now we can rotate our first bend 90 degrees and we're going to grip it roughly three or four millimeters or an eighth of an inch and we're going to rotate that 90 degrees again. Lastly, we're going to rotate those bends 90 degrees to make a perfect Z-bend. I want this push rod to be as close as possible to the fuselage. So I'm gonna remove my servo arm and go into the outer hole. I'm gonna rock it into place all the way to the back. Now temporarily reinstalling my servo arm onto my servo. I'm gonna hold my rudder perfectly neutral and I'm gonna mark the edge of the hole that meets up with the outermost hole of my control horn. Next, I'm gonna bend that 90 degrees And just like before, we're gonna rotate that 90 degrees here, and then we'll bend our push rod 90 degrees towards the outside of the fuselage. Finally, we're gonna cut off the edge, and this is what we call a modified Z-bend. I'm gonna go ahead and leave that because it's gonna be much easier if I have to change the holes that are in there, that I'll be able to actually rock this out and then rock it into a different hole. So now with a gentle rocking motion here, we'll line this up. One final assembly. And that looks great. 
Now the reason we haven't glued any of this together is because we still have some very fine adjustments in both the servo and also the control horn. One thing we really want to make sure is that the servo holes are directly over top or as close as possible to the hinge line of our rudder or any other control surface. This is going to give us even deflection both ways. It's also very important that we make sure that our servo arm is perpendicular to the servo. This is going to give us even deflection again in both directions. Once we've confirmed again that everything is centered, both the servos, the control surfaces, we can lock it in one at a time with some hot glue. First thing we're going to do is a control horn. Simple bead of glue right on this seam right here. And again, we can just adjust that very carefully, make sure it's perfectly neutral. We're gonna let that dry, and after that's dried, we're gonna lock down our servo. All right, that's dried. Let's go ahead and we'll pop out our servo. Put a bead of glue on both sides here. And then I like to just put a bead of glue right on the top to make sure it's firmly locked in. And our last step is we're gonna lock this down with our servo arm screw. Now this is really important that we don't forget this step because if your servo arm pops out, you're not gonna have any control. We're gonna let that dry and we're gonna do the exact same process now on the other side with the elevator. Step one, we're gonna connect our 30 centimeter extension, make sure that the signal wires, no matter which color they are, are lined up and our ground wires are lined up as well. We're gonna secure that with a piece of tape. And then using gravity as our friend, we're gonna slide our connection all the way up to the nose. Let's go ahead and temporarily seat our servo in place and we're gonna install the shortest servo arm that we have. Next, we'll do our Z-bend. And we'll place it through the furthest hole on our servo arm. Making sure that our control surface is even, we're gonna mark with our thumb the point at which we need to bend to pass through this control arm. Bend 90 degrees out towards the tip of the elevator. And then we're gonna bend vertical 90 degrees. Now we can carefully remove our servo arm, pass it through the outermost hole of the control horn, and rotate 90, and then we'll reinstall. We want to make sure that at all times our control surfaces are nice and neutral. If they're not, we have some adjustment through either our control horn or our servo itself. Once we're happy with the fit, We'll lock down both the control horn and the servo arm with some hot glue. And once everything's dried, we're gonna lock down our servo arm with our servo arm screw. Now that the elevator and the rudder are done, let's go ahead and do the exact same process on the ailerons. Now for the ailerons, we're gonna do very much a similar process that we did both on our rudder and our elevator. As you can see, we already have our extensions on, but also you'll notice that we put the longer of the two servo arms on. Now, if you're a beginner, what I'd like you to do is start off with the middle hole that you see here. But as you get more advanced, you'll be able to move this out towards the outer hole, which is gonna give you incredible maneuverability and aerobatics. Our servers are already centered and we already have our 30 centimeter extensions on. Let's go ahead and route these, making sure that the servo arms point out towards the wingtips. And just like before, we're gonna guide our arms right on through, and then we can reach down and pull out our lead. Again, we're gonna place our servos here, the friction fit, it's gonna allow it to sit right here, and you're gonna see that our arms will line up beautifully with the control horn. As you notice, we haven't cut out our ailerons yet. We're gonna let this stay in place here so everything remains perfectly neutral as we make our adjustments. Then before we glue everything down, we're gonna go ahead and cut our ailerons free, do our bevel cut, reinforce it, and then we can lock everything in place. Next, we're gonna take our razor blade, we're gonna cut through a score line. And press our control horn in place. Now that we have our control horn loosely in place and our servo, we're gonna do our Z-bend. Again, gripping about a quarter inch from the edge, rotate 90 degrees, rotating that and gripping about an eighth inch, 90 degrees again, and then turn it from a modified Z-bend to a standard Z-bend. We're gonna rotate that whole assembly 90 degrees once more. As I mentioned before, if you're a beginner, this is the hole right here that I'd like you to pass it through. If you're an advanced pilot, go ahead and move it towards the outer hole. I'm just gonna lift this up carefully. Anytime that we can keep our push rods as close as possible to the surface of the plane, the better it'll be. 
good. Now we're gonna line up with the outermost hole here. And notice whenever I make my mark for bending my wire, I'm gonna keep it on the very edge of the hole. So that way as the radius of the wire turns, it'll pass right through the control horn. I'm gonna grip it right here. Bend it 90 degrees inward. Grab about an eighth of an inch, 90 degrees upward. And then we'll cut it off. And for this model, I'm just gonna go ahead and bend this back streamline just like that, make a standard and make a standard Z-bend. Pop this out. Little rotating motion is all we need. We're gonna set everything down in place. Again, any time that your servo may have moved, feel free to use the centering tool that's included in our crafty kit to recenter your servo. That looks perfect. Obviously everything's neutral. Before we glue it now, I'm gonna go ahead and remove my control horn. I'm gonna take my razor blade and I'm gonna cut my aileron free. First step here is we're gonna line right up and cut all the way through parallel to the fuselage on that edge mark. Now this ledge mark that's on the wing, it's very important. We're only gonna make a score cut. If you're worried about the stability of your hand, you can always use a ruler. The etch mark does a wonderful job in guiding it, but if it does wander back and forth, it is going to give you some problems. There we go. Now with a careful motion, I can fold this over 180 degrees and I can cut my bevel cut. Anytime that I have to come back and maybe I'm not happy with the score cut, all I simply need to do is just a little rocking motion and we can back cut all the way to that hard 90. Now it's really important that we have plenty of deflection both ways and that you don't feel any resistance whatsoever when you push it down. Once you confirm that you have no resistance, we're going to do a hot glue reinforcement hinge the exact same way we did on our rudder and our elevator. And a reinforcement hinge, simply a bead of glue right over the paper and the foam. And once we've laid that down, we'll use a scrap piece of foam to go right over it and scrape off all the extra. It's incredibly important that we make sure we get off all the extra hot glue and that we also let it fully dry before closing our aileron. And finally, we're gonna go ahead and test the deflection, make sure we have no binding if everything moves smoothly before and then after your reinforcement hinge, it's really stiff, look for any kind of globs of glue in this area. Definitely remove that because if you have any kind of bind on any control surfaces, the plane's not going to fly well. Also, if you notice that it ever binds between where you cut for the aileron to release from the wing, simply take a piece of your push rod wire, drag it up and down a couple of times, and that'll give you the perfect spacing to make sure it doesn't bind. Now that we have our ailerons cut out, we'll do one final test, make sure we're happy with the way everything places. We'll confirm that our servo is centered and then we can glue it all in. And we wanna always make sure that the holes of the control horns are directly over or very close to the hinge line of the control surface. I'll put a little drop of glue underneath each arm of the servo, also one on each edge. Press it down into place. All right, that's one aileron down. Let's do the exact same process now on the other side. It's the same process before as we did on the other side here. Again, we're gonna make sure that we have our extension taped and our signal wires match. We're gonna guide it through the hole and then we'll press it down in. Next, we'll do our Z-bend. To do our Z-bend, we'll grip it a quarter inch from the edge, bend 90, rotate it 90 degrees, bend about an eighth inch down from that bend, 90 degrees again, and then to turn it from a modified Z-bend to a standard Z-bend, we're gonna rotate that 90 degrees once more, giving us our Z-bend. For the ailerons, we're gonna pass it from the bottom on the outermost hole if you're an advanced pilot, on the center hole if you're a beginner pilot. Next, we're gonna pass the razor blade all the way through our score cut for the control horn, and then we'll set our control horn in place. 
Whenever we place and test fit our control horns, we're gonna make sure that the holes for the control horn are directly over top of our hinge line. Now we're gonna mark where the inner circle meets with the control horn. And from that point, we're gonna bend 90 degrees in and 90 degrees vertical. Cut about a quarter inch from the edge and finish off the modified Z-Bend to make a direct Z-Bend by rotating 90 degrees. Now we can pass our push rod through the outermost hole of the control horn and do one final test to make sure everything is nice and centered with our servo and our control horn. Once we're happy with that, we'll rotate our control horn out of the way and using our razor blade, we'll do a full cut releasing the aileron parallel with the fuselage. And then finally using a ruler, We'll line up with the etch line and do a score cut from the root of the wing towards the tip. Now that we've done our score, we can rotate this 180 degrees and do a bevel cut along our aileron. And then again, the easy way to back cut, just a little rocking motion, kind of like a saw blade all the way up against the hard 90. I'm gonna check to make sure we have full deflection both directions. And once we're happy with that, we can come back and do a reinforced hinge. After we have our reinforced hinge, make sure you can move the controls both directions without any binding. And if you need to, you can open up some space between the aileron and the wing with a simple piece of pushrod wire. Lastly, we're gonna return our aileron to neutral we're gonna pass our control horn through, we're gonna make sure we're happy with the alignment, and then we're gonna lock everything down with some hot glue. At this point, all of our control surfaces now have servos and our linkages and our control horns installed. We're ready to move on to the next step, which is building our power pod. Now that we have the main airframe of our Scott XL built, it's time to put our attention towards the power pod. The power pod is gonna be what holds our motor and our ESC and fastens into the airplane. Now this power pod design is gonna be very common to all of our future XL designs here, and the main fact that we have a double thickness sidewall. Some power pods may be a little bit longer, a little bit shorter, but all the construction should be pretty much exactly what you see here. The items we're gonna need is our main fuselage power pod piece, our firewall, and of course our 2814 motor to go on top of it. Along with that, we're also gonna need our hot glue gun, a razor blade, and some tape. The first thing we wanna do here is to weed out the sections of foam that we need in order to get our C folds and our A fold. Let's go ahead and do that right now. And just like before, anytime we have score cuts, we like to chase those score cuts with a razor blade just to make sure that the paper easily peels off. Feel free to pause the video and make sure that your piece looks exactly like what you see here. Now for our power pod, the first thing we're gonna do on both sides is gonna be our C-fold. To make a proper C-fold, all we simply need to do is fold our pieces over 180 degrees and make sure the very edges line up with each other and the side with the paper is 90 degrees. Once we practice that fold, we're gonna lay down a bead of glue I always like to put a little thin ribbon right on the paper and then fold it over 180 degrees. And again, where we're putting most of our attention is just to make sure that all the edges line up with each other. We're gonna give this about 30 seconds to dry and then we can do the other side. And we're gonna do the exact same process on the other side. Always checking to make sure that the fit is proper. There we go. Once we practice that fold, we're gonna lay down a bead of glue and then we'll fold it over 180 degrees and again, where we're putting most of our attention is just to make sure that all the edges line up with each other. Now that we have both of our C-folds done, our next step is to do an A-fold to finish off our power pod. To do a proper A-fold, we're gonna leave the side plates firmly against the table, and we're gonna rotate the bottom plate up 90 degrees. You're gonna notice that when we do this, we now have both surfaces of our fold over now meeting with the bottom. We wanna make sure that we put plenty of glue on both those bottom surfaces so we get a good, strong glue joint. So we go ahead and practice it. We have our 90 degree bend. Now we can focus the majority of our glue right on the bottom of both those layers. Then we'll take our side plates against the table. And as we push our bottom plate against the table and rotate it up 90 degrees, we're gonna hold that until it's fully dry. Just like all of our other builds, it's always good to make sure that we hold this at 90 degrees just to get a nice square fit. Now that's dried, we'll do the other side here. Just a quick test fit. That looks great. Now we can focus the majority of our glue right on the bottom of both those layers. Then 
we'll take our side plates against the table, and as we push our bottom plate against the table and rotate it up 90 degrees, we're gonna hold that until it's fully dry. Now that we have our main power pod section, we can double check just to make sure that both of our side plates are above the bottom plate. Now that we have our main power pod made, we're gonna go ahead and test fit our main firewall. And our 2814 motor is made specifically to be able to fly our XL model airplanes. Now it's really important whenever we mount this that we make sure that we mount this so the wire leads can easily go through this hole right here. And if you notice, our spacing on our back motor mounts is not the same. We're gonna make sure that we line up our two outer and that the orientation is proper so these can pass through. Once we see what that orientation is, we can then transfer this over to the power pod and glue it in. Put a nice healthy bead of glue. The glue that does add tremendous strength, but it's really the tape that we're gonna put on next that is gonna make this last for a long time. Put this right on top. I like to let it squish down here. And it's really easy to go back afterwards with a scrap piece of foam and scrape off any excess that you may have. Now that our firewall is glued to our power pod, our next step is to wrap it with tape all around all three sides to make sure the power pod and the firewall are joined. Whenever I wrap these, I kind of wrap these as if it's a gift, making sure there's plenty of overlap and then I can fold it down on all three edges. Now that we have everything taped up, we're gonna carefully remove the tape from the areas that we need to so we can properly mount our motor. Make sure that you don't neglect the center hole right here because that could actually prevent your motor from spinning freely. Now included with our 2814 motors, we have these four countersunk screws. We also include this X mount, and if you wish to provide your own wood screws, you can use this X mount to be able to mount to the outside here. But in this case, I'm just gonna use the simple blue Loctite here. I'm gonna use my screwdriver and I'm gonna mount the motor from the rear. So if I ever need to loosen it, all I need to do is remove the power pod and loosen the screws. Definitely recommend any time that you're mounting any screws to your motor, if you have blue Loctite, definitely use it. First thing we're gonna do is just gonna pass our leads right through the firewall. Put a little drop of blue Loctite on this. Now that we have one screw threaded in, we can use that as an index and line up our other three screws and then tighten them all down evenly. Now that we have our motor screwed on, our last step is to attach our ESC. Now the orientation that we plug in our three ESC leads is going to decide our motor rotation. If for any reason your motor runs backwards, in this case clockwise instead of counterclockwise, all you simply need to do is change any two of the three motor leads right here. And just to keep everything dressed up nice, we can use either a piece of Velcro or a little bit of hot glue. And we're going to glue our ESC right onto the sidewall so that both our lead of our battery can go out the back and also our signal lead. All right, friends, at this point, our power pod is done. We're ready to move on to our next step in the build, which is gonna be the landing gear. All right, friends, we are now onto the landing gear of our FT Scout XL. We're gonna have these pieces that you see here in front of me here. We're gonna have our two very thick landing gear wires. We're gonna have our doubler plates, and we're also gonna have our center plate. This center plate is gonna crack out to be two individual pieces, just like you see here. And these have etch marks to help us line everything together. The tools that we're gonna need for this is gonna be glue, pliers, a ruler, and if you have a wire bender or some heavy duty side cuts, you'll definitely want them. The first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna condition our doubler to be able to receive our landing gear pieces. To do this, all we simply need to do is line up our doublers right over top of the etch marks as you see right here. Once you're happy with the way it lines up, we're gonna put some instant glue on the very back of it. You can also use epoxy if you want, if you don't mind it taking a little bit longer to dry. One thing I wouldn't recommend doing is using hot glue. This is gonna take a lot of wear and tear, and a strong glue joint is critical. Cool. Once we're happy with the alignment, I'm gonna spread some glue on the doubler. I always like to spray the other side here with some kicker, then we can line it up and glue it in. All right, there's one side. And same process on the other side here. Just gonna line it up, make sure that we have the orientation proper. Spread some glue around. Throw some kicker on there. And then set it in place. You're gonna see that this gives us a nice cavity for our landing gear wire to be able to notch down into. This is gonna be really important to give it plenty of strength. 
We're not gonna glue the other side on because now what we wanna do is we wanna bend our wire to be able to match up with our doublers that we have here. So for bedding our landing gear, each landing gear leg is gonna have two unique measurements. The first one is gonna be at two inches, and the second is gonna be at nine inches from that two inch mark or 11 inches. And our last mark is gonna be two inches from that. We're gonna do these measurements on both of our wires, and then we're gonna go to our bench vise and we're gonna bend both wires in the shape. Now that we've measured the first landing gear wire, we're gonna to go to our vise and we're gonna bend the landing gear wire in the shape that we need. Once we have that wire bent, we're gonna bend the next shape to match it. The only difference is we're gonna add roughly one eighth of an inch of length to account for the fact that one wire will stack over the other wire. Now that we've bent both of our wires, we can trim the remaining excess wire off, leaving enough room for both the wheel and two wheel collars. All right, friends, we have everything bent here. Again, I'm sorry, this incredibly thick wire is hard to bend, but a vise in just a little bit of time will make it work every time. Also, a Dremel cutoff wheel is also your best friend if you don't have huge heavy duty side cuts. Now that we have these placed in here, we're gonna take our last remaining wood piece here. We're gonna lay this over, make sure that it firmly fits down all around here. And after we check for that fit, we can open this up. I'm gonna put a nice layer of instant glue right down over the wire. Plenty of room to dry here. And I'll spray the other half with some accelerator or kicker. And we can lay this down right over top, line up all of our edges, and then press down. Hold this for at least a minute, let the glue fully dry. You can also take a weight or even a vise and clamp it together. Now that our landing gear plate is dry, let's go ahead and take the included wheel collars, a 1.5 millimeter hex, Tighten the first one down here, just at the very edge. We'll slide our wheel on, and then tighten it down. Same process on the other side. We're gonna tighten the first one down here, just at the very edge. We'll slide our wheel on. All right, our landing gear is now done. We're ready to install this into the FT Scout XL. All right, friends, now that we have our landing gear built, our next step is to install it into the fuselage. You're gonna see four hash marks on the bottom of the fuselage, and those are gonna line up with the relief on the doublers below. We're gonna go ahead and use our straight edge. We're gonna cut straight across on both these lines, and what we should be able to do after that is be able to slide in our landing gear, and then we'll glue it down. A simple rocking motion is all we need. and the landing gear fits right down in place. Now it's up to you if you want to glue these in or if you want to leave these so they're removable for later options like our future eventual XL floats. While we have our plane upside down, let's go ahead and rotate this 180 degrees and we'll put on our very last piece and that's going to be our keel right here. This is going to fit right on the back of the tail, notch down just like you see here. Once we're happy with the fit, all we simply need to do is put a bead of glue down, press it in, and line it up with the rudder. Once our keel is dried, we're gonna use the pointy end of our barbecue skewer. We're gonna punch it into the foam. And we're gonna let it trail off about a half of an inch. And then we'll glue it in place. Now that we have our landing gear and our rear keel installed, let's go ahead and flip this over on the mains guys out of the way here. No apparent damage! Now that our landing gear is done, our next step is to mount our power pod. For the power pod, we're just gonna make sure that both our ESC lead and our power lead are dangling out through the back. We can address those later. We're gonna line this up with our motor. It is gonna be slightly of a tight fit. And then with the rocking motion, we're gonna slide all the way back. Before we lock this down with our barbecue skewer, we're gonna make sure that the thrust angle is proper, and the way we know that it's right is by the fact that it's sitting right on the bottom ledge of the doubler right here. Now as an option, you can choose to add on our dummy engine cowling. That's gonna be the pieces that you see right here. When you glue these together, make sure that you mirror them opposite of each other, or you're gonna have two lefts or two rights. And using our barbecue skewer, we're gonna go along each hole and press through both layers of foam. There's one, there's two, there's three, 
and there's four. We can take it all the way through, making sure we leave about three quarters of an inch on each side, just so we can grab the barbecue skewers and pull it out if we ever need to remove our power pot. Same process on the front. Just a twisting motion. Should line up exactly where we want it. And we can cut off the excess. Now our last step is we're gonna flip over the airplane. And for our controller, we're gonna be installing the FT Aura 5 because it gives you amazing features like launch assist, level assist, and also gives you stability even on the windiest days. There's also a configuration that you can use to download that's gonna take care of all of your servo reversing, all of your rates, all of your expo, and also give you the level assist already turned on. The link for the configuration and also the videos explaining how to download the configuration will be in the description below. What we wanna make sure that we do is with the airplane mounted upside down, the pins are pointing towards the tail. I've already downloaded the configuration for this. The next step here is I'm gonna show you exactly which wires to plug into which servo ports, and then we'll glue it in the airplane, making sure we have it in the proper orientation. So here we have S1 through S5, and our signal wires are gonna be the wire pins that are pointing towards the center of the board. If you look closely, you'll see a little horseshoe shape. That horseshoe shape means signal. So this is my throttle. Throttle is gonna go into S1. Our next port is gonna be our left aileron, so it's gonna be this aileron right here. Again, we're making sure that all of our signal wires are pointing the right direction. S3 is gonna be our right aileron. S4 is gonna be our elevator. And S5 is gonna be our rudder. If at any time you plugged any of these in the wrong channel, mainly the elevator and the rudder, which are very easy to get backwards, all you simply need to do is pop them loose and swap them out. Now for mounting this, I'm gonna mount this upside down, and that's another really important thing with the configuration. With the configuration, we rotated the board 180 degrees to allow it to mount upside down and still keep all the gyros in the right direction. Something very simple to do is just put four big drops of hot glue right on the bottom of the board. We don't want it coming loose. And then making sure that the pins are going towards the back, we're gonna mount this right in the center of the wing, keeping it nice and level. Using either Velcro or a drop of glue, we can mount our satellite receiver. And I always like to kind of have one receiver wire dangling out vertical and one going horizontal inside the fuselage. Now, as I mentioned earlier, I already downloaded and loaded the FT Scout XL configuration, which means as long as you mounted all the servos in the orientation and used the arms in the orientation I showed you, everything should be absolutely perfect right out of the box. Now, this one here is specifically configured for a Spectrum. You can easily remap for something like a Radio Master, a Jumper, or an FR Sky. Now while the airplane is still upside down, I'm gonna mount my Velcro on the bottom of the power pod. It can be fuzzy or prickly, whatever you want. I'm gonna use fuzzy fuselage today. Next, I'm gonna flip the plane over 180 degrees and I'm gonna have the plane point in the same orientation that you see right here. This is how we're gonna check to make sure everything is going in the proper direction. So my radio is on. I'm gonna plug it in. There we go. So holding the plane, making sure it's pointing away from you, we're gonna start with the elevator. When I pull back on the elevator stick, the elevator should go up, and it does. When I push forward, obviously it goes down. We're gonna go over to our ailerons, and when I move my aileron to the right, the right aileron will go up. When I move it to the left, the left aileron will go up. And finally, when I go to my rudder and push my rudder to the left, the rudder will go left, and then to the right. Now, if you need to do any adjustments to go ahead and center your controls, you can easily set your trims and then follow the video we have where we show you, you can take the trims from the transmitter and lock them into your Aura. The cool thing about that is they'll store those trims so one controller can fly many different airplanes even if it doesn't hold multiple models because all the advanced tuning and mixing is in the Aura itself. Last thing we're gonna check is the direction of our prop. And that's moving counterclockwise. Now that we've checked all of our throws, we make sure everything is right. Let's go ahead and get our center of gravity established, put our prop on, and we'll go out to the field. All right, friends, the FT Scout XL is ready to fly here. We have our center of gravity established. We have our prop on. Everything's ready to go. Now, if this is your first time flying, we have a really great video called Six Quick Tips for a Successful First Flight. The wind is nice and calm today. This can actually handle quite a bit of wind. Now, the wind is coming kind of directly towards us here. We're going to always take off into the wind, especially for our first flights. Let's go ahead and put her down on the ground. We'll take her off and see how she flies. So we're out here at Adams Board Runway here. I got my plane on the ground, uh, checking right, left, up, and down, always making sure our controls are going the right direction. Let's go and see how she flies. Yeah. <laughs> 
So takeoff does not need full power. Basically, half throttle or above, she's gonna lift off beautifully. One thing about big airplanes is they're so easy to fly and with this light wing loading, you don't really have to worry about a stall biting you. We'll go ahead and throttle back here, do a nice slow flyby. And just so you can see what the power of the 2814 is, you can see vertical is no problem at all. All right. Now I do have an aura on this, so if you're training, a really nice feature is being able to put in something called level assist. Level assist, especially with the aura configuration that we wrote, is gonna make it hands off every time. Nice gentle buzz here. And although it's a trainer, and although it's an old timer, you're gonna see it has incredible control. Do it. Let's go ahead and do an inverted pass. So if you guys have heard me in videos, this is one of my all-time favorite designs. And the reason is, is it can be a trainer, it can be an aerobatic airplane, it can really grow with you. It can be something that you let your best friend fly for the first time, and then you can take it out and really tear it up with it. And we'll bring it in, even if it's a crosswind here, we'll show you how nice she handles the wind. <laughs> and there we are. Friends, I want to thank you for being part of the Flight Test family. Thank you so much for building along with me. Whether it's the Mini Scout, the Simple Scout, or now the Scout XL, if you're looking for a fantastic World War I trainer that can also grow with you, these designs are the bee's knees. Look forward to building again with you. We'll see you next time.